Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode of the vlog and for the first time in four weeks we are not working on the S3. Now the S3 is fine and I've been driving it around uh, for the past few days but today we are going to be doing some stuff on the Abarth, the Fiat Abarth. In fact we are going to be adding a mod to the Fiat Abarth. Yes, we are adding a race chip to the Fiat Abarth. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that right, Paul? Did I hear you say you're gonna be adding a race chip and not a remap? Let's talk about that. There are two reasons why I'm adding a race chip to this car and not a remap. Number one reason, let's talk about uh, race chips down devices. Now, a lot of people, they will look at the race chip and say, oh, that's just a bolt on and you know that's not a real remap. And a real remap is when you basically alter all the fuel and everything and you do the whole system and not just one part of it, the turbo, which these bolt ones do. That's not the case with a race chip. Let's talk about a race chip and let's show you what race chip really do with their devices. So first of all, race chip have their own rolling road, a Maha rolling road, one of the best rolling roads in the world. How many remappers do you know have that? And then they spend a lot of time, sometimes up to a year, making sure that all the parameters for the car are safe to ensure that you get the best power output and the best pleasure when you're driving the car and not compromising the engine. Plus with a race chip, you can put it back to standard and the car will be fine, which means you can take it in for a service and it won't affect your warranty. Finally, how many manufacturers or race chips or, or competitors give you a guarantee? Nothing, not many. That's one of the reasons why I like race chip uh, so much. So um, that's why I choose them. Not dissing remaps as, or at all, because they're very good. But for me, I prefer the race chip because of the additional research that goes into making sure that I'm getting the best performance on my car without pushing the engine over its limits. Oh, and just to be clear, this video is not sponsored by Race Chip, okay? So I've purchased this myself. Race Chip are not sponsoring this video. So everything that I'm saying is me and not a sponsorship. Just wanna make that clear. Okay, first things first, let's take a look at this engine bay. Ooh, this engine needs a clean. All right, let's do a little camera trick. Nah, only kidding. All right, let's get this engine clean. There we go. That is much better and now it's ready for us to add the race chip so we're going to show you the full procedure on how to fit a race chip and then we're going to go and take this car out for a spin to see what the results were okay so let's talk about installation so installation of the race chip for the fiat is pretty straightforward so inside the kit you've got your race chip device here and you have your wiring harness take out the wiring harness and the race chip device you have your instructions down below now these instructions they are generic so if, if we look inside of them you will see various pictures from different models of cars so here we have a VW and here we've got something else that I don't recognize however race chip will send you some specific instructions for your vehicle so don't be alarmed if you see that with the installation Okay, so looking at the wiring harness on the Fiat, there is just literally two connections that you need to contend with, and they're marked up A and B. You'll see those in the instructions. But obviously one of these connections will go into the socket, and the other end will go into the probe. So with this vehicle, like I said, there's only two for you to worry about, which makes it simpler. On the Audi, there was three and we'll see that when we come to do the S3 later on. So, where do these go in the car? Let's go and take a look. Right, so, in order to fit the kit, we need to take off the air filter cover and um, all of this bit here. We'll do that in a second. There's one thing that I've got to say about the whole experience with working with Race Chip or, or ordering this kit, was that the instructions that came with the Fiat 
weren't the best. I'll, I'll show you on the screen now. I've got like four pictures and from that four pictures that you can see on the screen now, I have to deduce where they connect up. Now, fortunately, I know and um, it makes it easier for me to do. But what I'm going to do for my Patreons, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step guide that you'll see on the Patreons on our, the um, portal when you log in. So if you do invest in this kit, follow what you can see on the Patreon site, and then mm. you'll be able to complete this with no problem. Okay, so before we do anything, I haven't started this car for a while. So because I'm gonna put the race ship in, which is a change, we're going to just start the car to make sure the car's running okay. Once we've established that, we'll then start taking apart the air filter and then we'll disconnect all the different various connections. <clears throat> okay, let's give her a quick start. car is fine so now we can start taking this apart and then we can fit the race chip in okay so if you were able to decipher the connections for our pictures connection one goes down here connection two goes underneath here so we've got to take out the ECU we're going to disconnect the battery and then we'll be able to access that and then of course we need to remove this filter so we're going to get on and do that right now Okay, so just to give you a little bit of an update. So you need to remove three bolts, one here, one here, and then there's one in the middle down there that's now being removed. You then have to unclip all these wires that are connected to this battery box. Then once you get that done, you then have to unclip the um, return pipe here that goes to the air filter, which I've just left dangling here. Once you unclip that, then that's going to release the battery box and then that will allow us to get to the cable underneath there so a whole lot of fraff to get that off but it should be worth it but i thought i'd give you some heads up because it's important because the instructions don't let you know that and it's nigh on impossible to get to that connector there without lifting this battery box out of the way so it's important that you know that. So three bolts and then unclip all the cables and then we should be good to go. Okay, so we finally got the battery tray out and that exposes our little connector which is here on the turbo downpipe. That's the reason why you need to get the battery tray out. You could attempt to do it with the battery tray in place but believe me, it, you'll be on a mission impossible. So we disconnect that there and then we're plugging our cable and then we can then start the, um, put the thing back together. Okay, so we've got our second connection done. Here it is here. That's all connected and what I've done, I've run the pipe work on the back there. There was a spare channel just at the back there. So I've utilized that to um, make the cable trace nice and neat. That then will bring us back to our main box here and that's where we plug in the race chip. So all we have to do now is just put all this back together make sure all the cables are not snarled up and then we are good to start our testing. Okay, so the car's back together and I didn't show you much of that because it's pretty much the reversal of um, taking it apart. In fact, it went back very easy. So we have the race chip now module. This is the blanking plate in place. The car is powered up. So what we need to do now is we need to connect the race chip to the cable. So we simply do that by pulling out the purple um, lock, which releases the blanking plate. We'll put that to one side and keep that in a safe place. We plug in the race chip like so and then lock it back up together. 
and then that is it the race chip is now connected up so we now need to do a test we're going to turn on the ignition just make sure that everything is okay and then we'll come and check the status of the web of the um race chip but we won't start the car yet okay so we'll stick the key in now and what we should see is a standard dashboard yep that looks all fine nothing exciting there we're seeing exactly what we expected to see so let's go and take a look under the bonnet and see how the race chip is looking okay and the race chip is functioning when you um, turn on the power what you should see is the mode it's in so at the moment it's in sport mode we should see the bluetooth indicator that's certainly there and then the on off um, power indicator which is on so we can see all that so we know that that's connected up fine so now we're about ready to do a first start up okay so here we go first start up perfect and that is it so now the only thing left to do is to do a road test yep everything is functional which is great right so we're going to take this car for a little bit of a test drive now see what it's like with the race chip so we have set it up into sports mode and we're going to see how she pulls i think the best thing to do is we're going to take this down to the dual carriageway and then we'll be able to give it some real you know decent testing and see if we will notice a difference i know how this car performs because i've driven it for a while now as you can imagine so i know what i'm expecting to see let's see if we can tell what 40 brake horsepower feels like okay all right so we'll resume when we get to the dual carriageway okay so we are coming up to the dual carriageway now and uh, this is it this is where we're going to feel the difference actually i've already began to feel the difference in this it feels really talky when you pull away uh, and that's definitely the chip it's uh, it's not that not the placebo effect sometimes you put these things in and uh, you feel that uh, you think you're getting more power but you're just willing it but this definitely definitely feels different it's, it's pulling like Ooh, I've never seen it pull before. So let's go now. So we're going to go on the dual carriage where we go down to the bottom and uh, we'll see how we get on. So here we go. Put the window up. Whoa. Yes. Yes, she does. Wow. What a difference. <laughs> 40 brake horsepower is not much in the scheme of things but to the drivability of this vehicle it really makes a difference and the power is quite low down normally you expect the power to be higher up in the rev range but it's not it's low down and it really is pulls really pulls well i'm really impressed i'm really impressed and it just cost me 15 euro to upgrade. That's phenomenal. So would I recommend the, the race chip? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And you can see how it would work really well with other modifications to go with it. So I would say that the race chip is probably the starter of your upgrade if you're doing anything on, on a vehicle like this. So we're gonna go around the corner now. We go around the roundabout and back up the hill again just feel that pull but yeah it's definitely it definitely feels better much more drivable now and pulls from I don't know I can't see what's doing well pulls from about 3000 rpm here she goes wow third gear fourth gear fifth gear it's a different car, it really is a different car. And I think I've still got one more mode to go. <laughs> I've not even got the full mode yet. So um, yeah, for what I've got now, it's great. 
really is fun. Definitely worth the money. So I urge you, if you really want to um, benefit from uh, a mod like this, just, just get a race chip. Don't listen to what other people say. Take it from me, they are worth every single penny. I mean, just like now, just you just to pick up and pull it. Just It's a different car. It's a different car. And you know what? In a week or two, I'll probably be so used to it. But for now, it's like upgraded. It's like I've upgraded the vehicle. So I'm definitely enjoying it. And I definitely recommend you do this as well. So that's a thumbs up race trip. Well done, guys. You've done a phenomenal job once again. Okay, let's get this back to HQ and um, we'll wrap up this video. So to wrap this video up, the race trip is a definitely worthwhile mod for your car, whether it be a Fiat, a bar, or anything else. But do yourself a favor, get the GTS model, because when you need to upgrade to another vehicle, you can take it along and upgrade it for once for 15 euro. After that, it's 95 euro. So definitely worthwhile doing. So that's gonna be it for this week. Don't forget to subscribe down here. And if you're not a regular subscriber, but also join our Patreon. Support this channel by joining our Patreon, which will be in the link below and also the end of the video. And we've already got uh, a few Patreons and we thank you for the guys uh, who have uh, participated in that program. So if you can, please join our, our program and then we'll be able to support this channel going forward. So take it easy guys and we will see you midweek.